We conducted this study because we have a very special population of patients that have a genetic predisposition to develop colon cancer as well as duodenal cancers. And um, the colon cancer is managed fairly well in these individuals through colectomy as well as chemo prevention um, agents such as Solendec. Um, but the duodenal uh, precancerous polyps and cancer risk is not managed effectively in these individuals. Um, they have a 10% lifetime risk of developing duodenal cancer. Um, they have, their condition is a genetic condition that's inherited. Um, it's, the, uh, it's the adenomatous polyposis coli gene and it's a, a fairly rare condition, about 1 in 10,000 individuals. But um, as I mentioned, they have a 100% risk of colon cancer and then a ten, if it is not managed properly and a 10% risk of duodenal cancer. And these duodenal polyps that they develop um, also cause a lot of morbidity and mortality from um, surgeries that they need to undergo, which is suboptimal. And there really has not been a chemo preventive, any sort of other options for these individuals besides surgery. Uh, this trial was um, thought of because some preclinical data suggests that um, if you can inhibit COX-2, which is what Solendac works on, um, and EGFR, which is what the drug erlotinib works on, if you could inhibit both of them simultaneously, you hit the pathway that drives up COX-2 level and also APC, the gene that's mutated in these individuals. You can hit the pathway in two places and maybe at that point we could drive regression of the duodenal polyps. Um, Solendac has not worked well in these individuals and the thought um, in the duodenum of these individuals and the thinking is is that it's because COX-2 levels are expressed much higher in the duodenum and you can't get the levels down. And so both mouth mo mouse models as well as um, molecular studies suggested that if we can hit both pathways maybe we'll start to see a response. The primary findings were um, that in fact we were able to drive regression of duodenal polyps in these individuals. It was um, a two-arm study where one arm receives Solendac plus erlotinib, the two inhibitors, and one arm received the placebo. Um, we find that there is um, an increase in polyps of those on placebo and a decrease in those on, on um, the erlotinib plus Solendac. And there's an overall net difference of 75% change between the two groups. That's, a, that's an excellent question and that's definitely something that we need to pay attention to moving forward. There were significantly more adverse events that were observed in the um, drug arm, especially grade two, and primarily these were an acne form type rash that they develop, um, which is very typical for erlotinib treatment. And we saw that in 87% of the individuals who were on erlotinib. Those only, um, those were grade one and grade two, so they were minor um, side effects, but they, they're very irritating to the individual. And as a chemo prevention agent, you don't want something that's gonna cause that. Um, we were able to manage it in the patients and, and they all stayed on trial. Um, there was probably only one or two that, that withdrew because of, of the side effects. Um, and the, we managed it with, with uh, sterile cream, uh, cortisone type creams and um, antibiotics um, managed it pretty well. And then the, the response would, the acne form rash would taper off after a little while too. But um, that's definitely a side effect that we saw. Um, we didn't see any um, more serious. We saw one grade three adverse event in each group, both the placebo group and the drug group. In the drug group, it was oral mucositis or canker sores um, that were really severe in one individual. Yeah, so the take home message is that we have shown proof of principle that we can drive regression of duodenal polyps in these individuals using, if we can block both pathways. Um, it, 
We have not shown the clinical implications of it, and that is going to require a longer term study of um, looking to see whether it delays surgery or prevents surgery, and maybe even at some point if it actually prevents duodenal cancers. And so this is the start, this is the tip of the iceberg, the start of something that may really turn out to be very effective. Erlotinib is not the perfect drug. It is very expensive and it has side effects. And so hopefully, as we move forward in our understanding of how we can chemo, use chemo prevention in these patients, that new drugs will come on board that have less side effects, will understand the dosing better to reduce the side effects, and hopefully a more affordable EGFR inhibitor.